Alright, I am going to talk about something that I personally think is really complicated and I've got uh, a few years of experience. I expect most people are going to have a hard time wrapping their mind around exactly what's happening with this and that's authentication policies and authentication policy silos. These are a uh, requirement to know in the AZ-801 exam, but I don't know if you'll get asked many questions. And to be honest, I've looked at a few guides on how to set these up, and even one published in a Microsoft blog that the guides themselves, you could tell, didn't quite understand what they were doing or how it was supposed to work. They were probably tasked with, hey, we need a document on how to do this, so they created it. And the guides themselves are even vague enough to indicate that the person creating it didn't know exactly what it was they were doing, just that they were doing it. So we're going to take a look at authentication policies and authentication policy silos. And I want to specifically call out ahead of time, if you look at the Microsoft documentation for these, it will say that uh, users need to be a member of the protected users group which we covered in a previous video. Go ahead and go back and look at it if you want. Essentially, that's just a group that adds extra security restrictions around members of the group. Um, that's not actually a hard requirement to use authentication policies. What the requirement actually is, is that the in order for these to work and to work, well, in order for the authentication policies to apply, the extra controls you're wrapping around these accounts, though, you have to be using Kerberos for authentication. You can't be using NTLM because these are all controls that only apply to the Kerberos process, the Kerberos client and the domain controller. Um, I Kerberos itself is a hard protocol to understand. It's complicated. Uh, and generally speaking, I would tell people you don't really need to understand it all that well other than the fact that that's primarily what domain controllers or Active Directory uses and you really should have NTLM disabled but you don't really need to know that much about either to be able to work a long time. I've probably People have probably worked their whole careers without knowing a lot about it but it is a requirement for uh, these and essentially what authentication policies are doing are wrapping extra controls around the authentication methods of Kerberos. I'm not going to get into too much detail about it because you don't really need to know other than Kerberos is required. There's also a couple of prerequisites you have to have set up in your domain in order to use Kerberos. Uh, those prerequisites are configured using group policy. So I'm going to go in and we'll set those up right now. There are two group policies you have to use. Uh, one applies to the domain controllers itself. So we're going to go into the default domain controllers policy and edit this to enable that. Uh, expand this really quick. We're going to go to Policies, Admin Templates, System, and KDC. Uh, KDC is a Kerberos role. Essentially, it refers to your domain controllers or the servers that are uh, handling the authentication requests. And what we need to turn on is this KDC support for claims, compound authentication, and Kerberos armoring. Based on documentation, it sounds like Kerberos armoring is specifically what they're doing with these authentication policies. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to set this to enabled, and I'm going to set this to always provide claims. This uh, supported and always provide claims is pretty similar. I, I'm not going to get to the, I'm not going to get too into the weeds in this whole video because it's not necessary. Essentially, you just have to enable this. So go ahead and set this enabled. Always provide claims. Hit apply. Hit OK. That allows Kerberos armoring from the domain controller's perspective. And then I'm going to close out of the domain controller policy. And I'm going to go into the default domain policy because there's a separate um, policy you have to configure for the uh, domain computers. And that's going to be very similar. It's policies, admin templates, system again. And instead of going to KDC, we're going to go into Kerberos. And it's literally the exact same policy, but for Kerberos clients, meaning it's not from the domain controller perspective, it's from the computer perspective instead. And there's not a drop down here. You just have to enable this and hit apply and hit OK. And with those two policies in place, you are now able to apply these authentication policies and authentication policy silos because the Kerberos claims themselves are going to be the extra claims that will come with those or the extra 
features that come with those claims are now going to be looked for and supported. So I'm going to run a group policy update on the DC here. So it gets that. Uh, I don't need to save that. I don't know what I was doing. Okay. Uh, GPOs are enabled. That's good to go. And now to configure these authentication policies, it's in the same place you'd go to configure the password settings object. You have to be in the ADAC console. It's not in ADAC. And there's actually an authentication folder that should be here by default. You'll notice there's two subfolders in here. There's one for policies and there's one for silos. And I'm going to talk about those separately, but we're going to use both in tandem. Um, the policy itself is uh, literally what applies to the Kerberos claim. So if I go into new authentication policy, I'm just going to name it auth policy. There are a lot of potential settings here and the settings refer, re, refer to the individual object types that exist in Active Directory. Um, user sign on obviously this is a policy that applies when users sign on and then there's other elements here for service tickets service sign-ons service tickets for service counts and computers these are all very specific uh, this anything referring to service counts is referring in Microsoft's mind to a managed service count or a group managed service account it's not talking about like an AD user that you've configured to use as a service count. There's no way for it to draw a distinction for that. So that's talking, if you're using managed service counts in any form, that's what those refer to. And the computer policy itself is uh, applied to computer objects. I'm not going to worry about setting these settings. For the sake of our example, I actually don't need to set really any of these settings. All you need is a policy object to apply. And um, that's good enough. But for the sake of being thorough, I'm going to go into this user sign-on. So this is a policy that will apply any time a sign-on event is initiated, initiated and uh, applies to all resources by default. But I'm going to go ahead and set this ticket granting ticket lifetime to 120 minutes. Um, if you watched our protected users video, uh, the ticket granting ticket lifetime is essentially your logon duration. Um, that's as long as you're able to use these uh, ticket-based services. So if I set those to 120 minutes, after two hours, that user effectively can't do anything else and needs to log out and log back into the service to renew that. And if the person's or the user is already a member of the protected users group, as they suggest, then um, they're already limited to four hours. So this is just setting it to an extra restricted two hours instead of four hours. So I'm applying this, but like I said, if you wanted to, you don't actually need to use an authentication policy, but this is essentially setting extra security requirements on the Kerberos session for that user. And um, you have more controls on here, but most of them are basically the same thing. You set your ticket granting ticket lifetime and all these different things for different types of accounts. Um, it's ironic to me, given that their documentation says the, everyone should be a protected user if you're using these because they go in tandem. They do have some sort of setting here for NTLM. I'm not going to bother figuring it out. I don't really care. For sake of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and create the policy, and I don't need to set anything here. Um, what's worth calling out is you don't actually need an authentication policy silo to use this. You can create a policy like this and apply it to individual users. Um, but what a silo or well, users or service counts or computers, any AD object, but what a silo grants you um, is the ability to restrict uh, logons for a certain set of users to a certain set of computers. Essentially, it groups those together so those users can only log into those computers and nothing else. Um, that's really good in the case of like the example I'm going to use here is we're going to set, we're going to apply this authentication policy in silo to our domain admins and the domain controllers. What that will do is it will limit admins to only being able to log into domain controllers, which is great because then you don't have to worry about those credentials uh, being cached elsewhere or uh, being compromised by having some sort of remnant on an existing app directory system that isn't as tightly controlled as your domain controller should be. So I created my policy here. Like we said, all that's doing is setting my uh, logon time essentially to two hours. And then I'm going to go and create a silo. Now, like I said, the silo is just grouping users and computers together so that it restricts those logon activities to that. So I want to enforce this. You do have the ability to set these in audit mode, 
to test them. So if you're creating them, you can set up an audit, apply it, and look at logs to validate that they're only being applied where you expect them to be. That's probably not a bad practice if you're doing this in production, but for our example, we're going to go ahead and enforce it right away. And I'm just going to call this auth silo. And under permitted accounts, I'm going to add. I don't think I can use a group here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're restricted to the individual objects types. So what I'm going to do instead is I have two DA accounts. I've added my DA users, and then I want to add my domain controller here because I have one DC. So I've got my two domain admin accounts, and I've got my domain controller. Hit OK. And now these are grouped together in this silo. And if I scroll down, you can have separate authentication policies per type. I'm not going to do that. We have one policy, so I'm going to go ahead and select that policy. And I mentioned earlier, you don't actually have to configure any settings in your authentication policy uh, to make this work, uh, specifically to use a silo. All you have to do is have one that exists because you're going to apply it here anyways. So if I didn't have settings, I could still choose this because it exists, but this is why you need one. You can't create a, sol a silo without selecting a policy to coordinate with it or multiple policies if you want separate ones. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now I've got my authentication policy and I've got my silo. And what's really frustrating about this is you would think just by selecting those objects it would work, but no, you actually have to go in and uh, go into the user in ADAC and manually link those accounts with the policies. So I got to go to properties. These are my DA accounts that I um, specified in the silo. And then I got to go to silo here and then assign the silo that I created. You'll notice there's also a section here to assign an individual policy which means you can apply policies outside of a silo if you only want to do things like that um, ticket granting ticket restriction. In this case, we're going to do the silo because we want to restrict those logins, so that's what I'm going to select. So I'm going to hit OK there. I'm going to go back into this user as well and do the same thing. Okay, And I'm going to go back to my domain servers Oh my actually it's in the domain controllers OU. Properties silo assign. Okay. Alright. At this point you would think it's done. It's still not done. I forgot I have to go back in here and do one other thing. I have to specify uh selectors for this. Um I don't want this to apply to all resource. I'm going to add a condition. So I'm going to say this applies to any users who are a member of authentication silo equals. I wish I could select this, but I'm just going to say auth silo. Okay, so what this is saying, this authentication policy only applies to the users who are a member of this authentication silo, so it's kind of a recursive thing. That way I'm not accidentally applying this to some other user even though I'd have to manually apply it. That's just some of the weird nuance to these things that don't exactly make sense, but that's how you have, should configure it. You'll notice it, it's got green check marks saying these are applied in this silo, and if I go back to the silo itself, I should also see green check marks saying yes these are assigned and what's that what that is doing is checking that property on the user under the silo where we select the authentication silo it's validating that it is it has been selected and therefore it is applied so now that these are good to go I think I actually need to restart my domain controller for it to apply so let's go ahead and do that And in the meantime, if I close this connection and I try to connect to a different server using, oh, I just restarted my 
domain controller, which is my only DNS server, so I can't use the name. Uh, I believe remote desktop that server IP is 10.0.1.5. Okay, so this is my DA account. Uh, this is the account that I applied that authentication silo to. So I'm going to go ahead and before I do this, actually, because remember, I had to enable that group policy for the Kerberos armoring, and I want to make sure that applied correctly to this um, server before I try logging in. Otherwise, it's going to be a bad example. So, I can't use IP configuration. So, I'm going to have to wait for that domain controller to come back online. Ping. Uh, looks like it's online. All right, so we should be good to go. So there's a better way to do this. I need a GP update. I'm going to go here, go to servers. Actually, go to group policy, select servers, and run group policy update. Good to go there. All right. Now, this is me trying to connect to web P1. There you go. So I get this error message. A user account restriction authentication policy is preventing you from logging in. So this is happening because the authentication policy silo is preventing us from logging to this server because it's not a member of that silo. However, if I switch to go to ADP1, and I'm going to switch to the same account, which was that L Evans DA. I can log in. So to recap, authentication policies themselves are extra layers of security around the Kerberos protocol. Because it requires Kerberos, Microsoft's guidance is that any user you're applying an authentication policy silo to or an authentication policy must be in the protected users groups or they recommend it's in protected users groups specifically because they want NTLM to be disabled. Otherwise, NTLM can skip the whole authentication policy. Assuming that's in place, you need two group policies, one for the clients and one for the domain controllers that enable that Kerberos armoring feature. And then you have to go in, set up the policy, set up the silo, apply the silo to each user and computer, and then the silo then applies, uh, restricts any logons from the users in the, in the policy silo only to the computers that are also in that silo. Very repetitive language, um, kind of a technical frustrating service, but uh, from a security perspective, if you have if you're using this for your domain admins, which in my mind makes the most sense from a common use case, uh, you can drop your domain admins into protected users. You can create a silo that includes your domain controllers and your domain admins. Uh, make sure that it's applied correctly. And now your domain admins are restricted from logging in anywhere else in your domain, which is a good thing. That's the demo. Uh, feel free to leave me any comments if there's something I can clarify. Otherwise, I'm going to probably try and link some uh, a really good guide I found for these in the comments, but it's just a guide. It doesn't really have any description of what's happening in the background.